Hello guys, I'm Foxy and this is Population One. Population 1 is a battle royale shooter in virtual reality. As of 9th March 2023, it is free to play on Oculus Quest 2. The main game mode is the squads. It features a fight of 6 squads of 3 people on gradually shrinking battlefield. Your squad starts on one of the two platforms floating in the air. From here, you can use a pod. Or do a hot drop. Once on the ground, starts the usual for Battle Royale looting part. You need to find weapons and ammo, backpack upgrades, builds, and healing items. The fight is on until only one team is left standing. And that's a core gameplay, broadly speaking. Now let's take a closer look. All the matches take place on a single big map. Each time you start on a random side of the map, the square zone that shrinks, pushing all the players into it, also has kind of a random pattern. You start with 100 health points. HP can be restored via health sodas and bananas. Health sodas require a short opening and restore 20 health over 11 seconds. Bananas require peeling, but then instantly restore 50 HP. Also, you can get the shield up to 100 shield points using various shielding items. Usual shield pods instantly give you 10 or 20 shield points. Shield sodas require a short opening and give you 20 shield points over 11 seconds. Shield shakers require 5 seconds to charge and then instantly give you 50 shield points. At the start, you have only a knife. All over the map you can find different pistols, shotguns, submachine guns, assault rifles, sniper rifles, rocket launchers, two types of grenades, and a sword. All guns, except for the rocket launcher, have a rarity of a power level designated by stars from 1 to 4 or, during some events, to 5. Most stars may mean more ammo in the magazine, better accuracy or higher damage depending on the gun type. And of course, for every gun you have to find the respectable ammo. Sometimes weapons and other items can be vaulted out of the game. For example, a shield regenerating harmonica that is not available at the time of the making this review. Your inventory is not unlimited. At the start, you have space for three items, whether they are weapons or healing items. It can be expanded up to six slots via backpack upgrades. But you can have as much ammo of all kinds as you want. Any items or ammo can be dropped if you want to share with your teammates or make space for something else. 
The game features the vertical combat system, which means that you can climb on any surface and also you can fly by gliding from any high ground. For protection or concealment, you can use builds, just like in Fortnite. Builds also need to be looted. When you kill an enemy, they drop all of their possessions on the ground, and on top of that, there is a shield pod that instantly restores 50 shield points. If you get killed, but your teammates are alive, you become a ghost and at any time you can be revived. Some of these you get to know from the tutorial, so don't skip it. It's all pretty simple, but don't let it fool you. It is a classic, easy to learn, hard to master situation. I can totally see why you expect the guns in ITR to act stable. These look like toy guns compared. Smiley face. No, I just control the recoil. Look, AKM. I don't do anything. MP5. And here's me controlling the recoil. And this is AKM control of the recoil. Oh god, surprised face. So, if there is the main mode, there should be others. You guessed right. But there is a catch. Other game modes are only available for a limited time and replace each other. So far, there were 7 secondary game modes that I know of, that with each iteration may get some tweaks here and there. War mode. War mode is a battle of two big teams, either 9v9 or 12v12, depending on the iteration, where one of the zone phases makes the play area extremely small much sooner than usual. So okay, there's somebody over there the trip for you. Yeah, the war has shoot over there. The war has begun. Team Deathmatch. Team Deathmatch features a fight of 6 vs 6 on a much smaller static battlefield which is just a part of a regular map. Players respawn after dying and it usually requires 30 kills in total for a team to win. Legions Legions is a battle of 4 squads of 6 people, but all other rules are the same as in the squad's game mode. Metropolis Royale It features a fight of 6 squads of 3 people on a gradually shrinking battlefield, but the initial battlefield is limited by the Metropolis section of the usual map. Metro Arena It takes place on the same map as Metropolis Royale, but with no pods. Four squads of three people spawn right away on the streets with full shields. The battlefield gradually shrinks as well. Duos Nine teams of two people meet on the same battlefield and play by the same rules as in squads. Solos 24 people Players drop into arena, it's you against the world. Collect loot, stay inside the zone, and defeat the other players to build the last one planning. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna die the first one. The newest feature in the game, Sandbox. Any player can build and publish a custom map via in-game tools. And then all players can play on this map in the team deathmatch mode. This feature immediately brought to life a lot of very interesting and creative maps. Look at this! 35 minutes of my life. Do you love it? I hope you love it. So many. To warm up or get familiar with every weapon, you can enter the training park. It features two different gun ranges, the climbing and flight courses. To train with AI opponents, you can enter a bot battle, with usual rule set with a squad or on your own for just testing different combat options or to practice. It has four different levels of difficulty, so the bot battle can actually be hard to win. And then there is combat trial, where you need to fight a bunch of bots on a small static battlefield. The community might be the main reason to play Population 1 long term. That's what makes most people continue playing, the social aspect of the game. There are many groups in Discord and Facebook of any kind. For example, for ladies only, for beginners, for different clans, competitive leagues, content creators, etc. The community itself in general is considered much less toxic in comparison with any other game, especially with pancake games. There are many streamers, myself included, that mostly stream to interact with the viewers. So you're welcome to ask for any advice. 
There is no competitive league that is officially supported by the big box, although the community is passionate enough to support few active competitive leagues. The most massive and successful as of right now are mixed doubles and UGL. Players of any level can enter there. They have different game modes, different rules, and they even have prizes for winners. And it's free to join. I love playing Population 1. Right now it's my main game for streaming. It has a crossplay between PC VR and Quest 2, which is an accomplishment in itself for such a complex multiplayer game. But it has enough problems. Some bug fixes take ages to implement, and it is not always a 100% fix. The perfect example of that is the voice communication bug. It's been a problem since the beginning. For months, we had the voice chat turning on and off randomly, and sometimes only the gamers started help. Some people had no comms in the match for days with no solution, but they would be able to hear people in the lobbies. Many just stopped playing because of that. We got a fix several months ago, which was the voice reset button. But it doesn't always work. Some people crash when they press it. And it doesn't help with the quality of the communication. In general, the voice cuts off pretty often. At bedtimes, you can hear only two-thirds of what your teammate says. Pretty often, the matchmaking doesn't seem to work right. Total beginners often get to sweaty lobbies with people who have been playing for more than a year on a daily basis. I don't see how that is supposed to make new players stay and continue playing the game. Just recently, the option for choosing preferred servers was added to have better ping. But I still get turned off servers regularly. Sometimes I wonder if switching off even makes any difference. The developers are not featuring or supporting any competitive leagues, which is a waste of a lot of potential for growth. The reason for this is probably just not enough manpower at the big box. Of course, there are community-based comp leagues, but it is not very obvious for many players. Population 1 is one of the best VR titles available today. It's got a very low entry threshold, but almost inexhaustible potential to improve yourself. With modest visuals and simplistic game mechanics, it can offer a very engaging battle system that you can easily become addicted to. Population 1 easily can be labeled as a system seller, a game good enough to sell a headset. It is that good. And despite all of the problems, I hope it will continue growing and will entertain us for the years to come. And remember, the game is free to play for Quest 2 users since 9th March of 2023. That's all I wanted to show you today. If the video was fun or helpful, please press like and subscribe. You can find more videos about Population 1 on my dedicated channel. Anything to add or ask? Welcome to the comments! Thank you for watching! Bye!